Now, Honorable Finance Minister. Okay. Come on, yes. Sir, uh, thank you very much. While replying to the Finance Bill of 2014, we've had a very elaborate discussion. 19 speakers have participated in this debate, and 10 minutes short of five hours have been given to discussing this bill. I wish to thank all the honorable members who have come out with elaborate analysis of the bill and they, thereby also giving us a critical analysis of what is in the bill, some very useful suggestions, and of course, raise some very important questions for which we'll try to address in the reply. Taxes are a very important aspect of our economy, sir, and the financial proposals of the government are narrated in this bill. I'll try to give only some of the salient features just so the background is laid before I clarify on some of the points raised by the other members. Actually, the previous government has left very little fiscal space for the finance minister to do anything out of the box. And as a result, there has not been much of a room available. However, the Honorable Finance Minister has taken the challenge, retained many of the targets set, and taking that as a challenge has not constrained from giving certain relief to small and medium uh, or marginal taxpayers. Within the constraints, he's also tried to give boost to savings by increasing the investment limit under ATC of the IT Act from 1 to 1.5 lakhs. This is definitely going to have an impact on the savings of the country, which we need to give a great impetus. He has also provided conducive tax regime for investment trusts and real estate investment trusts. Moreover, the bill envisages uh, investment allowance at, which is at present allowed for large companies that invest 100 crores or more in the plant and machinery. But this, in order to incentivize the small and medium uh, entre entrepreneurs, and also small, very small entrepreneurs, this limit has been reduced to 25 crores. A 10-year tax holiday for power sector has also been extended till 2017. In order to reduce the litigation on transfer pricing issues, a number of path-breaking changes have also been made. In order, again, to reduce the stress in the manufacturing sector, basic customs duty has been reduced for fatty acids, for crude glycerin, steel-grade uh, limestone, coal tar pitch, etc., and many such things, LED TVs and so on. Government is also committed to promoting clean and efficient energy, and this, and for, uh, for this, provided a number of incentives for solar and wind energy uh, proposals. Government is also committed to broaden the tax base, particularly in the service sector, service tax area. In agricultural sector, we have provided for exemptions of service tax on loading, unloading, on storage, warehousing, and also on transportation of cotton to bring it at par with other agricultural producers. This budget actually contains a whole lot of other comprehensive measures, which of course all of you all have discussed earlier too. But here I would like to respond to some of the specific issues which have been raised by the honorable members during the debate. They are not in any particular order, so I wouldn't want to give any suggestion as to why I've come in a particular se sequence, but I've randomly uh, picked up on what are very important points mentioned. Uh, Honorable Member Tapan Sen spoke about the GAR. On that, I would want to clarify that it is already a part of our statutes. It is, a, a, uh, it is going to be applied from the assessment year 2016-17. In other words, the financial year 1st April 2015 itself. We'll assess, of course, and then we'll go forward. 
Again, Honorable Member KC Tyagi had spoken about farmers and farmers being consulted in the budget. Did their inputs go into the budget at all? I would like to assure Honorable Member Tyagi that consultations included several inputs which came from farmers. They were consulted in person. Several inputs came from various different organizations on farmers and farmers related issues. So member be assured that yes, the inputs from uh, Kisan have gone into the making of the budget. Similarly, Honorable Member Tapan Sen again spoke about the undisputed demand of 72,000 crores which are lying pending. I would like to just give two uh, pointed answers. There can be many more explanations for it. Persons defaulting may probably have no properties which can be assessed, uh, um, attached, or they can also be that demand not in appeal, but they could be under arbitration, or they could be other proceedings on them. So these are not completely devoid of uh, attempts to uh, take the pending arrears. So uh, again, under any dispute. No, That's litigation. Like, no litigation is there. That, that was the uh, uh, language word used in your uh, paper. Very on well. that basis, I am inquiring. Very well. Again, um, on uh, Honorable Member uh, Tapan Sen's point about uh, revenue foregone, uh, particularly pointing out on 5.78 uh, lakh crores, I would like to just give you specific details there. Direct revenue foregone figures are direct taxes 1.16 lakh crores, indirect taxes 4.55 lakh crores. These are absolutely notional figures of revenue not collected and not giveaways. In indirect tax, revenue foregone of 4.55 lakh crores is due to um, the uh, levy of tax at the rate lower than what is approved by the parliament. Indirect tax revenue foregone is not for the benefit of corporates, but for the benefit of common man. Tapan Senji, again, honorable member, again spoke of the share of direct tax revenue falling. Thus, the burden, on indirect, burden of indirect tax on common <coughs> man increased. On that, I would like to give you a clarification that the direct tax revenue is actually increasing year after year at the rate of 13 to 15%. The share of direct taxes vis-a-vis -vis direct tax has declined in the past years. It is mainly because of withdrawal of uh, stimulus in indirect taxes given in probably 2009. In, the year of the uh, in that year of the stimulus, the share of the direct taxes increased as indirect tax collection reduced. Now, again, uh, Honorable Tapan Sen, uh, Oh, I've answered that. Uh, Honorable member from BSP, Sri Narendra Kumar Kashyapji, had raised this issue of 3% people only being taxed. There are approximately 3.7 crore people are, being, are taxpayers. Measures for broadening this and widening tax collection are being taken, and a 360-degree profiling of potential taxpayers is also happening. So I'm sure this net is going to be widened. It's not going to get narrowed any bit. Uh, Honorable Member Praful Patel also spoke about pilot training institutions not attracting service taxes. Uh, let this be clarified that universities established by law or universities which give certificates do attract uh, uh, do not attract service taxes. However, pilot training centers do not give certificates, and such institutions certainly attract uh, service tax. And that point of clarification, uh, Honorable Member Praful Patel is not here, but he did raise it. We would like to make that absolutely clear. Again, senior member uh, uh, Sri Ram Gopal Yadavji from the Samajwadi Party raised issue and also suggested why couldn't we come up with voluntary disclosure, disclosure scheme. I would like to um, put on record here, the experience shows that when you bring in voluntary disclosure schemes, it discriminates against genuine taxpayers. Those who do, uh, do pay tax are disincentivized or it, it goes against honest taxpayers and it may even be discriminatory. 
So maybe that may not be a very conducive uh, path for recovering uh, more taxes. Honorable Member D. Raja and also probably Honorable Member Subirama Radiji raised issues on area-based profit-linked uh, incentives, uh, deduction, uh, and so on. Deduction, such deductions erode the tax base and criticism of several tax reforms committees and even parliamentary committees are on record discouraging such steps. So we would like to put that on record here. Honorable Member Saifuddin Sos, while uh, speaking about modernization of madrasas, has raised an issue about the amount which has been allocated. I'd like to say here that in the interim budget, amount provided was about 2000, uh, sorry, 275 crores. This has been increased in the current budget by 100 crores. So 375 crores is certainly an increase from the interim budget position. It's not a reduction. Um, there is uh, one last uh, clarification would I, which I would like to uh, give uh, in response to... Uh, I've, I've given a clarification. I've given a clarification about the amounts. Of course, that is a. I take your point. I take your point. Um, there is one last reference to Honourable Member D. Raja on the indirect tax revenue foregone, uh, and I just want to give you the uh, indirect tax revenue foregone comprises of the following: SSI exemption schemes, no excise duty up to clearance value of 1.5 crores in, within a financial year. Area-based exemptions which exist in the Northeast uh, states, JNK, Uttarakhand, and Himachal Pradesh. Supplies to defense sector are exempt from excise and customs. Crude petroleum is exempt from customs duty. Tariff rate is about 10%. Free trade area agreements, again. Export promotion schemes, again. All these cannot be withdrawn. So with these few clarifications, which I could rapidly, uh, you know, come back, I have uh, uh, mentioned. In fact, Madarsa modernization was also raised by uh, Honorable Member Ratan Puriji from JNKNC. I think the uh, point of uh, stating, the point of stating the amount that it is not reduced, on the contrary, the current budget has only improved upon it uh, in comparison to what was allotted in the interim budget. It's a point which I wanted to draw your attention to. So with these, uh, with these few, I, I'm sorry, I'm not yielding. Huh? Would you mind uh, if I give a uh, reply? I'm not no, yielding. So I'm very pleased. So no, please. uh, I would, uh, with these uh, words, I beg to move that the bill to give effect to the financial proposals of the central government for the financial year 2014, as passed by the Lok Sabha, be taken up for consideration. And I would uh, request and actually um, seek all the members to rise above partisan differences and support the bill because as one of the honorable members spoke this morning, all of us will have to rise above differences and support to lift the economy to become far more dynamic, more jobs and so on. Thank you.